ringside this evening are Daryl Ribby from South Africa, Reg Thompson and Tony Walker, both from England. Finally, when the action commences, the referee taking charge, Emil Teet from Dublin, Ireland. And so, introducing challenger and champion. Firstly, the challenger boxing out of the red corner wearing the white colored shorts. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled 13 stones, 7 pounds and 6 ounces. From 22 contests, he has 15 wins. 10 of those wins coming by way of knockout, 5 defeats and 2 draws. He comes to the ring as the reigning cruiserweight champion of South Africa. He is the challenger this evening from Johannesburg in South Africa. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the solid black shorts, trimmed with white. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled 13 stones, 6 pounds and 6 ounces. He has an outstanding record, 16 contests, 15 wins. 11 of those wins coming by way of knockout with only the one defeat. Tonight, he's defending his title for the second time, coming to the ring as the WBU's Cruiserweight Champion of the World from Swansea, Enzo McCarranelli. The referee, Mr. Tink, will now give his final instructions to both boxers. 12 rounds of championship boxing. But the big question is, can they start this fight in a blackout? It's like a cave in here at the moment. Somebody needs a ten-penny piece and pretty quickly to get the lights working again. Are these two going to be able to see each other? And we're, <laughs> you're hearing all kinds of discussion going on at the moment. Michael Pass, the MC, had to do the ring introductions using a television light. But they can't start like this, can they, Glenn? No, I, certainly they can't do this. This is not fair to either of the fighters. It's too dark to do that. There's obviously a problem with the, the ring lights. This is boxing's equivalent of a floodlight failure, isn't it? It certainly is. Oh, you brought the candles in. And you can't refer this to the pools panel, can you? <laughs> <laughs> so here's yet another unscheduled interruption to things we've seen it all over the years in boxing all kinds of hold-ups for all kinds of reasons you would have never dreamt of but here the problem is that the lights above the ring have suddenly failed as the introductions were being made they actually came on again briefly but only briefly and flickered away that's why we can't stay the fight there's the problem black dark void nothingness we're working on it is all I can tell you at the moment now how difficult is this for the two fighters Glenn well it's very difficult I mean you don't want this to happen you've got you concentrated you you want to get on with the, the job and then all of a sudden you know these are tense moments for a fighter you know you're gonna get ready for a fight and then all of a sudden you've got this disturbance and this really does upset your your concentration and your your rhythm crowd getting a bit restless with it as well now has anybody got a standby generator or some searchlights or something got a box of matches in your pocket Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> you'll need a bit more than that they've got the outside lights on but i don't think that's enough robert smith the assistant secretary of the british boxing board of control now they're just checking with the two caps to see whether they're prepared to fight in this kind of light actually in the arena it's a little better than it might look to you at home so they're just seeing what the two camps feel about that Frank Warren the promoter is in there as well he's seen all kinds of things over the years and you're hearing there Robert Smith just telling some of the other board officials that the South African camp want to wait for a moment. Nope. 
No, they, they agree that they're going to go ahead. In something like semi-darkness here. Thought I'd seen it all. Well, it's not too bad, really, in the ring for the fighters. They can see each other well enough. Well, let's see if we can shed a little light on proceedings as they go ahead here. Macronelli defending his WBU Cruiserweight Championship. Exciting young Welshman. And a very heavy hitter as well. In the black trunks here, in with Earl Marais, the 32-year-old champion of South Africa. He's made four defences of that title. One of them was a, a draw, a foul-filled affair. Cronelli's confidence ought to be pretty high. And he might be lifted a little by noticing that a race, every time he's lost, it's been by knockout or stoppage. Five times that's happened, including in recent fights in Panama and in Denmark. Well, good left hand, he's hurt him with that! It was a left hook, and he's hurt. The South African wants to cover up. And Macaronelli here is trying to power home the punches. Moraes shows his experience by trying to close the range. He'll need to cover up and buy some time here. Big left hand really hurt the South African. And a great left hook to the ribcage here from Macaronelli, who is trying to show everybody just why he's winning a few rave notices. Quite a start from him, Glenn. Yeah, very good start. Good shots getting through. Moraes trying to cover up, trying to buy time. Oh, Sent him down. Great shot from Macaronelli. It's over in round one. The corner of Rushton. They don't need to bother with the count. He's done it again. The Welsh sensation, Enzo Macaronelli, wins in round one for the second time running with some very, very heavy punching. And the only blackout in the end was for Alma Race. Well, as the lights come on, Mike Ranelli puts the lights out on Moraes, doesn't he? Yes, ironically, just as the fight ended, those lights that had given all the problems flickered into life. But as Glenn said, the lights were definitely out for Moraes, who is stopped for the sixth time at the moment. Enzo Macaronelli can do no wrong. 16 wins, one defeat, and he still hasn't gone past four rounds, but that's hardly his fault. He's trained for 12 hard rounds, but his power is such that he's likely to take anybody out like this. Yeah, good right hand on the side of the head, then the left hook, the legs all over the place at this point, and Maurice did well to, to cover up and get through it for a while. The finishing punch was a right cross in the end after the left hook. That's the one that did for Bruce Scott in the end. Had him in trouble in the first place. Just watch how he finds the finishing punch. Starting to get his hands up. Catch a few shots, Moraes, but he kept the punches going through and it was finally a uh, good combination of punches, left hooks and right hands. He's so confident at the moment. He knew he had him hurt, and that was the one. That, whoa, big, big right hand. Enzo Macaronelli has done it again, the pride of Swansea. There is that final right hand right through the guard, and Moraes wanted nothing more of that as he sunk to the canvas. Big right hand, good punch. He's proven he can take them out with the left hand or the right. This was a guy who arrived as the South African champion, who looked a reasonable fighter, not world-class or anything like that, but a reasonable opponent at this stage, and you cannot argue with a finish like that. That was explosive again. He is exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute and 30 seconds of round number one, Referee Emil Teet has reached the count of 10. You're winning.
Your winner by way of stunning knockout, he is still the WBU's Cruiserweight Champion of the World from Swansea, Enzo Maccaranelli. And a round of applause, please, for the brave challenger, El Maurice. Wally Solomons, the commissioner from the World Boxing Union, has presented the championship belt to the winner, Enzo McCarnelli. If James Tony hadn't got there first, it would be Enzo lights out McCarnelli from now on, wouldn't it? Do stay with us, we'll get a word with this exciting new cruiserweight star in just a moment or two. And still to come from here in Cardiff tonight, Eamon McGee against Jimmy Vincent in their much anticipated welterweight matchup. And I can tell you that the way those two went about it, they could see each other perfectly from the very start. What a buzz here, Nicky Piper. Yeah, I mean, amazing. After that display from Macronelli. Yeah, I, I think he's probably the biggest pound for pound puncher we've got in Britain at the moment. It's really, truly exciting. We, we keep saying, you know, he needs experience, he needs the test. But do we care if he ever gets it? If he punches that hard, you know, he may never get it. Let's get a word with him now. He won't be out of breath, will he? Craig Slater's going to dive in there. Well, Enzo, the second defence of your title, a second first-round knockout. You're making a bit of a habit of that. Uh, yeah, like I said before, I've uh, I trained for the 12-round. I've done the sparring, I've done the road work. Um, obviously, I am hitting hard, and if I see the opportunity, I'll take it. A big left hook that you stunned them with, and then a right hand to finish. You've clearly power in both hands. Yeah, definitely. I've, um, I've proven in the last couple of fights now I can... Uh, take him out with either hand but uh, like I said I seen the opportunity he was prepared to go for the full 12 um, you know tough customer he was so we prepared to go for the full 12 seen my chance and I took it is it world-class power you think you have will it translate at the very highest level oh definitely um, I got uh, full confidence in myself that way uh, we've got a lot of he's been with the, um, with the likes of Sebastian Rothman who's a ra top 10 ranked fighter and he had to take 10 rounds to do it which have been a great year over the past 12 months and how do you think things will develop in 2004? Who are you looking for? Well, to be honest, I'll, I'll fight whoever Frank Warren puts in front of me. Um, best promoter in the world. I've got a good team behind me, Charlie Peterson, my brother Valo. Uh, so, whoever. Let's bring in Frank Warren, your promoter. Frank, a lot of talk about uh, Enzo perhaps fighting Johnny Nelson at some point. You want to get to him before he retires, certainly. <laughs> It'll certainly be a good fight next year and uh, obviously one that we're looking at. But, I've, you know, Enzo, I think, is, you know, he's been a, a dramatic find. Uh, this year and uh, he's done everything that's been asked him. He's got tremendous power, great body shot. He started it, started the, uh, started what he did. But um, you know, he's done a lot of big things. I think he's just such a you know, tall, long, loose, powerful, powerful puncher, and that's what the fans like, and that's what I like as well. I like to see him doing that. So he'll fight again on the 21st of February, when Joe's uh, postponed defence will also take place. So we'll be back here in February. When's so Johnny Nelson the number one target? Well, of course, um, I have a great admiration for Johnny. He's uh, probably the best champion of the lot. And uh, obviously, I've got to set my sights at the best. And to me, he is the best. So three or four defences, two or three maybe. And uh, we'll see what comes at the table. Well done tonight. Thank you very much, Even on that brief viewing, we cannot wait for the next Macronelli appearance. Lots still to come. Nicky Piper's verdict on the performance of his young compatriot when we come back and then it will be at welterweight McGee against Vincent